1963, we were introduced to a romantic comedy mystery film that was produced and directed by Stanley Donnan. That film was called Charade. It was written by Peter Stone, and it starred Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn with a grand supporting cast, which included Walter Matthau, James Colburn, George Kennedy, and Ned Glass. It's really hard to categorize this film. It bounces around between being a suspense thriller, a comedy, and a romance. The screenplay is outstanding, especially the interaction between Grant and Hepburn. It was filmed in Paris and is accompanied by Henry Mancini's musical score, which adds another delightment in this film. Maurice Bender does the animated titles in it, which also makes it stand out. The movie is best known for being the best Alfred Hitchcock film that Hitchcock never made. The sharply written script brings the screen time alive in the Paris setting with the backdrop of shifting identities. The director, Stanley Dunnan, does an exceptional job of crafting this cleverly devised movie to make its memorable twists and turns stand out in its plot. It's both electrifying and charming with its elegant pairing of Cary Grant and Miss Hepburn. The film is based on Peter Stone's novel of the same name, which was published and then serialized in Red Book magazine. The story was originally written by Stone in script form as an unproduced script called The Unsuspecting Wife. Its plot is a tale about the search for missing and stolen golden treasures that are worth $250,000, all this done by five survivors of the Second World War, who were all in the Office of Strategic Services together and they're now threatening the newly widowed and estranged wife of one of their accomplices. After viewing the opening sequence, you can tell what you're in for in this film. It starts with a tongue-in-cheek sequence set in a swanky ski resort in Switzerland. A gun is pointed at the lovely Regina Lampert, played by Audrey Hepburn, while she's on her holiday. Holding the gun is the young son of her friend, and it turns out to be only a water pistol. Upon returning to Paris, this lovely lady is shocked to find out that her husband, Charles, who was planning to divorce her anyway, has been brutally murdered during her absence by being thrown from a train. As the penniless young widow attempts to untangle the mystery involved, she's given some of his few existing possessions that are in a Lufthansa travel bag a letter addressed to her, a ticket to Venezuela, passports in multiple names, and a few other items. At the scene of the funeral of her late husband Charles, three strange men, that being three of the accomplices, later identified as Tex, played by James Colburn, Herman Scobie, played by George Kennedy, and Leopold, played by Ned Glass show up at the funeral and begin staring into the casket to assure themselves that the man is actually dead. Then the suave, well-meaning, and handsome American stranger, Peter Joshua, offers to help Regina, but so do a host of these other men that begin to harass her. She doesn't know if Cary Grant's character is honest and above reproach, or if he's just hiding a whole bunch of secrets from her, as his name changes plenty of times throughout the movie. At first, she's head over heels for him, then she's running from him. Back and forth they go through the whole movie. She doesn't know what to believe, or who to believe. Cary Grant absolutely loved working with Audrey Hepburn during this movie. He was quoted as saying that all he wanted for Christmas this next year, after the movie came out, was to make another film with Audrey. But that never happened. Due to all the suspense in the movie and the presence of Cary Grant and also the structure of the screenplay that includes frequent plot twists, many people believe that Alfred Hitchcock was involved in this film. But he wasn't. Not at all. But when you look at the film in total, it really does seem like a Hitchcock-made movie. That's the reason so many fans call it the best Hitchcock film Hitchcock never made. According to Miss Hepburn, the scene where Regina spills ice cream on Cary Grant's suit 
was based on a real-life accident that happened between the two, when she, in fact, really did spill red wine on Cary Grant's suit at a dinner party. And in that same portion of the film, they end up using the term assassinated and then say assassinate in the dialogue between them. The film was released shortly after John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, and Universal Pictures was so worried about this statement and the possible reaction by audiences to this dialogue that they hurried and redubbed those lines using other words instead of assassinate. Then they sent it out in a revised reel to every theater in America that was showing the movie, telling them to substitute it for the old reel. Both the old and revised reels are still in circulation. The one that you view on Amazon Prime is the original and has the words in it. On The Tonight Show one time, George Kennedy revealed that Cary Grant had pulled a prank on him when they were making the film. During the scene where Kennedy's character is discovered submerged in a bathtub, Kennedy had to hold his breath during the shooting of this take. As soon as the crew was done filming the scene, Grant had everyone leave Kennedy, still holding his breath in the bathtub while they were filming on location in France. Despite being a long distance from Hollywood, the production was still affected by the political tensions that were escalating in America at the time. The scene where Cary Grant passes an orange to a woman without using his hands was filmed on the same day President Kennedy blockaded Russian warships from bringing missiles to Cuba. Grant's intense focus on this scene and the great physical comedy that evolved from it helped the cast and crew remain calm during this crisis that was happening between Moscow and the U.S. Cary Grant's character is being pursued by henchmen who he dismissively refers to as the Marx Brothers. As a young actor, still going by the name of Archie Leach, Grant toured the same vaudeville venues as the Marx Brothers did, and often he would watch them perform. He based a lot of his early stage persona on Zeppo Marx. There are a lot of references to Hitchcock's films in this movie. One that comes to mind is on the tour boats in Paris, where Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn had their first passionate kiss. The boat goes into darkness under a bridge. At the end of North by Northwest, Cary Grant and Eva Marie Saint have a passionate kiss, and then the train goes into a tunnel, which is a not-so-subtle joke about things to come. This is one of those items in the movie that is a direct nod done specifically by the director to give a hats off to Hitchcock. Another item that looks completely Hitchcockish is the opening credits that were done by Maurice Binder. They begin with this spiral shape, just like the credits in Vertigo did, done by Saul Bass in 1958. Now, it's really thought that Cary Grant was too old to play this romantic lead in the film at the time, but he does it remarkably well. There were a few things that had to be adjusted strictly because of his age, and one of them was the scene where he decides to take a shower with his clothes on. He was nearly 60 and slightly overweight, so it was thought that this scene would be hilarious to do it this way, and it would also solve the problem that he wasn't a hard-bodied romantic lead like he used to be. Now, in a variety of the scenes, the lighting caused some problems with some of the shots, particularly in the sequence where Audrey Hepburn is smoking a cigarette alone in her empty apartment, and then Cary Grant enters. When they originally did the first few takes, the backlighting made his ears just stand out. They appeared bright red. They tried in vain to figure out some way to keep this from happening. Then someone came up with the idea of putting masking tape on the entire back of his ears. So masking tape solved the problem of Cary Grant's appendages looking like Rudolph. If you've never had the pleasure of viewing this marvelous film that bounces all over the place and that's hard to categorize, you are definitely missing something. Take the time to watch it. You'll love it.
And it's definitely one of those movies that you see differently the second and third time you see it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.